in the new Africa, one more independent country, the state of Uganda. At Entebbe Airport, Prime Minister Milton Oboti and His Highness the Kabaka wait to greet the Britannia, which brings the Duke of Kent to represent the Queen at the independence celebration. And with the Duke, of course, his beautiful young Duchess. Lady Coots, wife of the governor, greets the Duchess while the Duke shakes hands with the Kabaka. A formal occasion, but more than that, because Uganda is gaining its freedom without bitterness, at its own request, becoming an immediate member of the Commonwealth. So the traditional gestures have a real meaning of friendship. Government House at Entebbe, which for one more day is still the capital, is where the Duke and Duchess stay during their visit as guests of Governor Sir Walter Coots and his wife. After tomorrow, Kampala is the capital. This afternoon, the crowds are gathering at Entebbe Harbour for one of the big events of the day, a canoe regatta. Canoes from all along the coast and islands of Lake Victoria take part. Victoria, the third largest lake in the world, and the other lakes and rivers that connect with it, are the lifeblood of Uganda and of the 28 tribes that make up its people. Biggest of the tribal areas is the Kingdom of Buganda, of which the Kabaka is the hereditary ruler. And these shores are in its territory. But in the crowd celebrating the independence that will be theirs at midnight tomorrow, you will find members of all the 28 tribes. For one of the first aims of the new state has been proclaimed as a commonwealth of interests, overriding old tribal divisions. At Twikobi, the Kabaka's palace, His Highness is to give a cocktail party. And more crowds are waiting and entertaining themselves while they wait to see the Duke and Duchess arrive. But first, the Guard of Honor. That salute, by the way, is a traditional sign of loyalty to the Kabaka by his followers. The Kabaka himself arrives. A ruler whose dynasty and kingdom were thriving long before the first European explorers came. The present Kabaka is His Highness Sir Edward William Frederick David Walungembe Mutebi Luangula Mutesa II, who now welcomes the Duke and Duchess. Now the Kabaka presents his ministers to the Duke and Duchess. Even at a cocktail party, a certain amount of formality is inevitable. But the crowds in the streets have no such inhibitions. They've got a new independence to celebrate, and they celebrate it, pausing to greet their visitors as they go by. The British, too, can contribute their share of noise and colour to a celebration when they want to. And the Scots Guards do just that for the big independence tattoo in Kololo Stadium. This is the climax of all these days of rejoicing, because here, at midnight, Uganda's independence will formally begin. Midnight, Sergeant Major Sidney Small of Birmingham lowers the Union Jack that has flown in Uganda for nearly 70 years. At the same moment, the 4th Battalion King's African Rifles becomes the 1st Battalion Uganda Rifles. And to replace the Union Jack, the black, gold and red flag of the new young state, Uganda is born again, free and independent. Next day is a public holiday, and by the time the Duke and Duchess return to the Kololo Stadium for the daylight celebrations, the Governor-General and the Prime Minister have been sworn in in their new roles. 
the Duke of Kent speaks to the people of Uganda, bringing a message of goodwill and congratulations from his cousin, the Queen. Not in any sense a goodbye, for Uganda has asked to be and has been accepted as a full member of the Commonwealth of which the Queen is head. Next morning, the Duke and Duchess arrive at Parliament House for the state opening of Parliament. Uganda's first Legislative Council met 41 years ago and has grown larger and more representative ever since. From now on, its power is supreme. Good luck to a new country a new member of the Commonwealth, a new member of the growing community of African peoples. Britain has come a long way with you and wishes you well.